Hey, how's it going? Uh, so just a quick one today. Um, just wanted to show you an idea I've had. Um, I've been thinking a lot about threading line through the eyes of hooks and through the eyes of a rod. The, uh, the light fast action rod that I've got has really small eyes, especially up towards the tip. Um, and some of the hooks that we're using, especially some of the smaller ones, they've got small eyes in them as well. Now, if you're doing this at home, you can control the environment. You can have your glasses if you need them. Um, you know, you can control the light, things like that. But when you're out and about, if you're having to swap over, perhaps from a drop, drop shot rig um, over to a jig head or something like that, you're going to have to re-thread your, uh, your line through your jig head, which can be a challenge. I've had to do that before. So I was kind of thinking about this. What is going to be a good way of being able to thread that nice and easy? Um, so I thought back to my school days and sewing. So I've got these. Uh, this come just in a little box, a couple of quid. Now I couldn't get these individually, so I had to buy like a pack of 20. Um, but you may or may not have seen these. I suppose it depends if you've done any sewing at school or if you've got a family member that sews or whatever. Um, but these needle threaders are quite good. Now, there are other threading tools out there, but these are super cheap. You can get a big old pack of them, so if you lose them, it doesn't matter. Um, and the way they work is, is they, you put this sort of little wire triangle through the hole that you're wanting to thread through, then thread your, your string or your line or whatever through that, and then pull it back through, and that threads it for you. So you don't have to be fiddling around, especially with something like braid that hasn't got a stiff structure to it. Um, so I'm trying to pick some up. Hasn't got a stiff structure to it. It's hard to thread through something. Um, whereas obviously the, uh, the fluorocarbon is a lot stiffer, a lot easier. So I'll show you um, a little bit closer up how these work. Um, the reason I've sort of been looking into this is the sort of two main elements of my um, sight condition is that I've got um, rubbish detailed vision uh, and also I'm light sensitive so when I'm out and about threading um, braid through a small eye of a hook is super tough I have to take my glasses but then I've got to take my sunglasses off to then use my normal glasses and it's just a real faff I usually do all this at home you know like, you know, like I say in a controlled environment um, but I'm going to be sticking some of these in my tackle box as a backup just in case. So let me do a little bit of a close up, show you how they work. Okay, so I've got a few examples of some things we're going to try this with, just to give you an idea. Um, we'll start with what I think is probably one of the hardest things to do, and that is um, threading fluorocarbon through a drop shot weight. What's hard about it is that these eyes on a drop shot weight are on a swivel so they move um, so it's hard to keep hold of it because it's can they can be quite small um, so what I'll do is I'll thread this through here he says there we go so that's in there like that and then we'll get our fluoro Here it is, and then we will put the fluoro through the loop on this threader, and then we will take the hook, the uh, the weight back through there, loosen that off, and then you've got your weight threaded. Simple as that. Now, the only th thing that is with that is that it does cause a little bit of a notch that could be a weak point then for your fluorocarbon so it would just be a case of keeping that in mind maybe do it low down your uh, your fluorocarbon lead so that you know any any snags is not going to affect your um where you've made that little notch. So I've only done it a couple of inches, a couple of inches from the bottom of that, from the tag end. There you go, so that's nice and easy. And then of course with these, you can just pop them off 
and move them up and down as you want. All right, let's try the braid through a jig head. So I'm just gonna thread this through the eye of the jig head, there we go. And then I'm gonna get this braid. Put this... So that's in there. And then again, pull the jig head, or whatever it is you've got back off of there. Easy. And then obviously you can tie that off. Um, the other thing I mentioned was swivels. Um, swivels on things like leads can be, again, quite tricky. The eyes on these, oh, if I can get in, aren't too bad. They're quite quite big. But again, they swivel, so it can be tricky. Again, that goes in straight away. And again, with the braid. Right. Here we go, that's through there again. And again, we'll just pull that back across. There we go, and then we can tie that off. Simple as that, and then that just comes out of there. There we go. Right, so we will try one more thing, and that is the drop shot hook. Now, this again is gonna be with the fluoro. This is the smallest hook. Now the eye in that, in comparison, to that, there's quite a difference there. So this is inevitably gonna be a bit more difficult. And what you will find as well is that, there you go, and that's gone straight in, um, is that to tie a drop shot not through to dry a hook, sorry to tie a knot through your drop shot hook you're going to need to go back through there you go that's gone in there straight away and let's see if this goes across into the floor eh? come on there you go a little bit of a tease it got through there we are so again, the only other thing is, it might cause a little bit of a notch, possibly, possibly a weak point, um, which is why you'd wanna go a bit further down. Um, and then you can tie that off. Now you can get drop shot hooks that have got eyes either side on a, and they're on a swivel. So that would be an answer to this little, uh, this little potential issue, is if you get the hooks that are on a swivel, they'll have an eye either side, then you can tie off your fluoro that way. Um, save you having to do a full on, um, you know, knot on this hook where you're gonna have to potentially pass it through. Well, they say in that, while you've got it through here anyway, it will probably be just as easy to you know, use the fluoro as a guide to thread back through the other way. And then also, again, it depends on the, the thickness of the line you're using. This is quite a thick braid. So yeah, there you go, this isn't going back through. So hopefully that gives you an idea. So these little threading tools, I'm gonna to be carrying a few with me anyway. And like I said, they come in a massive pack. I couldn't get them individually, but it did come with some pins. Don't know what I'm gonna use those for. Um, and it came with a nice little plastic box, which, I mean, these little plastic boxes are pretty good, useful, useful for pretty much most things. There you go. So a good idea or not, I'm going to try it out um, and use it while I'm out and about. I think it will work. Um, if you end up using that too, fantastic. Let me know if you've got any other ideas of, you know, techniques for threading through these small eyes and some of these hooks and, and so on. Then, yeah, again, let me know that as well. Um, yeah, that's about it. Look after yourself, take care, and try not to fall in.